Somebody asked for a cuddly Jinx video, and I thought he would be cuddly, but he's more playful right now because he found drawstrings, so that's fun. Rain and <laughs> shut up, stop talking, stop talking. <laughs> but <laughs> I did get asked a lot of macaw questions, and you guys kind of wanted a macaw care video, so maybe I'll go to those questions and do that. What do you think of that topic? Do you want to, <laughs> hello. <laughs> do you want to tell them about what kind of care you would like as a macaw? What could I do better for you? You could wear different clothing. Okay, macaw <laughs> cages. Macaw cages have to be strong. This guy can escape from pretty much every type of cage door imaginable. He can open cage doors. Blue-throated macaws are kind of notorious for being little Houdinis and um, troublemakers. Is that a good is that a good phrase for you, troublemaker? Can you just lick my face. Uh, so macaw, <laughs> this is this is gonna be. Maybe I should have chose a different macaw to do this video with. You're distracting. Uh, macaw cages. Okay, so I don't use normal bird cages. And it's because my end goal was always to have aviaries. I wanted to have as much space for my birds as possible so that their enclosure could be as enriching as possible and it could be outside. Um, so at the time I lived in Florida and I really wanted my birds to be outside as much as possible because the sunlight just makes their feathers so beautiful and all the rain and <laughs> shut up, stop talking, stop talking. <laughs> at, least, <laughs> at least don't look at me while you're talking. Rain and <laughs> shut up, stop talking, stop talking. <laughs> That was so rude. Uh, okay. <laughs> he just literally tried to put his foot in my mouth. That has never happened. So the aviaries that I use are six, so you're gonna ruin it, right? It's okay. Aww. I don't mind. Um, I wouldn't be wearing this shirt if I did mind. So, what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, oh. oh. If he starts to get hormonal, I will have to switch macaws. For now, he's playful, but I can see it kind of going that way. Yeah, that's going that way too. Keep it together, bubs. Keep it together. What were we talking about? Cages. <laughs> that tickles. What? That tickles. What are you doing? Are you licking my eyebrow? Jinxie, can you just, Bob, can you just, can you just not, can you just be more like Cressy? <laughs> can you just, can you just be more like Cressy and hey, and chill out and just like sit there and look cute and easy? Look like an easy bird. Uh, seriously. Okay. Um, I don't even know. Do you want to just sit on my knee instead? That knee. Rot. Rot. Do you wanna, no? Okay, great, perfect. Did we get anywhere on macaw cages? The bigger, the better, the sturdier, the better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think the bigger, the better because, uh, bub. When you can actually have a walk-in aviary and walk in to put your bird away, I find it's much easier to get them to come in and out. Ah! You're tickling me. What is going on? You guys are learning nothing. You guys are learning that blue throat macaws are crazy. But the bar spacing is important, the size is important, and uh, how enriching and awesome it is is important because you want <laughs> you want your bird to be as excited to spend time in there destroying stuff for <laughs> self entertaining um, as you do that it's excited to come out and spend time with you right like there needs to be a balance don't break off all my hair please I don't have that much don't break it 
Uh, what do you eat, Bubs? Bubs, what do you eat? Mm. Uh. <laughs> Stop talking. Stop talking, Jimmy. Stop talking. Popo, 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 popo. Do you guys hear him? That is him. Like those sweet nothings. It's so sweet. Um, right now, we are dealing with spring, and he is easily triggered by pats on the head and spending too much time with me. And if he gets my finger in his beak, <clears throat> that can be a trigger, so that's why I tried to put a stop to that. Can we keep going? Papa. Papa. He has the sweetest voice, though. I just can't. I just can't sometimes with you. You're so cute. I just want to squeeze you. Oh, he made a squeaking noise because... Usually when I say I want to squeeze you, I actually squeeze them. Jinx eats a fresh food. It's in my cookbook. Where's my cookbook? I should get it. what I do with the cookbook? Oh, okay, I got the cookbook. This is what I feed Jinx for breakfast. It is our natural feeding system. And by the way, it's avian bed approved. And if you like this, um, cookbook which is pretty much like a photo book it's so stunning i just want to give a shout out to the people who print these for us and make them so amazingly beautiful it is our seasonal feeding system and what that means is our recipes change with the seasons kind of like to mimic nature as best we can in nature they would be getting different seasons and so their food sources will change and so we have developed a seasonal feeding system so that we can also use what is in season. So we have some basic rule of thumb for these and some frequently asked questions about these. And then we have the actual uh, recipes. So we have a winter to spring, oh, featuring handsome Comet. He's so good looking. And then Jinxie, do you wanna come show them this? <gasps> yeah, boom, boom, boom. This is Jinxie's page. He has a summer, do not ruin my book. Uh, he has a summer recipe. Look how handsome he is. Oh, he's so handsome. So the summer recipe and then Bandit is our fall to winter. Seriously, I don't want you to ruin it. I don't want you to ruin it. Um, and then this book also, it's not just a cookbook, it's really a parrot nutrition feeding course, so to speak. So we go over sprouting, which has handsome Tusa freezing <laughs> He's just like, can I reach it can I eat it um, and then mm. intro to foraging and the basics with that and good things of that sort and then it goes into things like hypervitaminosis um, how to understand nutritional loss in produce and mineral and <laughs> vitamin deficiencies, fatty liver disease, um, things like that that are curable or avoidable through diet. So really, really cool stuff. I'm going to try to show you guys what the diet looks like while he breaks my sweater. It's probably best to show you guys. Um, <laughs> you can see all the different ingredients in here. And this is just one of the seasonal recipes. Yeah, and there are substitutions we talk about amounts especially because I make a much larger batch than probably most people since I'm feeding nine parrots. Is that right? Nine? Yeah, nine. So that's his breakfast. The, that seasonal feeding system is my bird's breakfast every morning and the other recipes along in here are different and fun ways to get your bird to not be such a picky eater and they also have things that are really fun to incorporate in. So for example, I could make this egg salad recipe and mix it in with the seasonal feeding and just to get a little extra calcium in that week. Um, I could also do it with this recipe here that has artichoke and sprouts in it. So there's certain recipes that are more kind of mushy and could act as like a binding ingredient. Did you get it? Oh yeah, you got it. Um, and then there, there's also breads for birds that like breads. We cover all the different textures. We use all the different species that we can from budgies to macaws. So for feeding, my cookbooks are my go-to. I had to learn about parrot diet and nutrition because my own cockatoos were showing signs of fatty liver early on because I did not understand diet fully for parrots and I thought that, I got irritated for no reason. Um, I thought that 
fruits and vegetables went together and they definitely don't. So since then I've learned a lot. Now their evening, ooh, ooh, he's excited. Their evening meal is an organic pellet um, that I sell on my website at birdtrickstore.com and it is cold pressed. It doesn't have any of the crappy stuff like GMOs or fillers or sugars or anything like that. So I'm really, really happy with this pellet and it makes my birds happy and keeps them very healthy. That is what Jinx's diet consists of. So you're probably wondering, oh, don't macaws need a higher fat diet than that because you didn't hear anything about nuts or seeds. I reserve nuts and seeds for training and or foraging. So if I have no plans to train, I will use nuts and seeds for foraging or as jackpot treats. So for example, um, when I go out of town and I have somebody watching over my birds that is not necessarily a bird person, I make sure that they know that those treats are <laughs> their golden ticket to accidents. So if and when Jinx escapes from his aviary, the way to get him back is through those treats. And they re retain high value because they are not part of the normal diet. So that's kind of where people go wrong with macaws is they think they need this high fat diet, yet their bird isn't even exercising to burn it off. They have this excessive amount of energy. They come across randomly aggressive and and hyper or territorial or possessive or whatever you want to call it and people just don't realize that they're giving too much fat and no source of um no way to relieve any of that energy sort of like get it out did you figure it out yet <laughs> where is it okay i'll trade you i will trade you i will show you guys how jinxy has a little metal thing that he shouldn't i'll trade can you trade me no trade me though. Papa. Papa. You gotta actually spit it out though. Papa. Come on, boy, Bubs. Spit out the metal though, and I'll trade. Papa. You're seriously able to hold on to both? There we go. He dropped it out. What's your nickname? Papa. Yeah. What a good boy, Bubs. Okay, cool. There's my metal part. No, you don't get it. It's just showing them what you did to it. You come? So that covers diet. Metal parts are not part of it, but as long as you reserve nuts and seeds, you can bribe your way out of those situations. Toys, okay, so toys. Here's the thing with toys. We also learned the hard way about toys. You see those um, viral pictures and videos going around places like Facebook where a bird gets impaled by some sort of toy. So we learned really early on what to look for for toys, and now we offer our own monthly toy boxes. So. What do some of those toys look like? Some are giant size for macaws. Others are more of like a medium size that work for pretty much any size bird. Since I have everything from Conyers to macaws, I get a variety of everything. But this is a great, <laughs> this is a great toy that we offer in our toy line. And we only uh, use veggie dyes, so that's a big deal. So they're still pretty to look at, but safe for the birds to interact and play with. These kebabs are actually some of my favorite. Some of them just come in one natural color. So these are probably my cockatoo's favorite, but also the macaws, they'll be destroyed really quick. And this pattern is more of a favorite for my macaws. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the demo. I was actually not looking for a demo, but as you can see, the macaws really like, for whatever reason, this, this one. Okay, this is ginormous. I'm just gonna show you part of it. This is our giraffe toy. The head's here. It hangs and dangles and has legs and stuff. It's really big. The cool thing is you can use this thing for foraging. So you can stick stuff in there. You can stick it in those, um, what are you doing, Jinxie? In there. There's so many different ways to use our toys as foraging. That's the main purpose of our toy line is that you can use it to teach your bird to self entertain. Um, because we don't want our birds sitting in our cages, sitting in their cages, 
sitting in our cages, whatever, sitting in their enclosures doing nothing. Um, so our toys are meant to stimulate the brain and get them to forage and destroy. So the quicker they're going through toys, the better. Oh, you want that one? Yeah, he immediately goes for the inside. So you can hide stuff in there and eventually, ideally, <laughs> Feeding your birds their pellets through the toys is an amazing way to get your bird to quiet down in the evening um, through self-entertainment. So it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff, guys. The things that you wanna look for with macaw toys are things that can be used for foraging and self-entertaining and just really diving in and having fun. Something they have to like rip apart every piece of it to, to get to the inside. Things that you can restuff is really great. Most of ours, the whole thing is destroyable. <laughs> By a, by a macaw, but that's also the fun of it. So the quicker your bird's destroying toys, the better. I still remember um, hearing from a client one time, they're like, oh, my bird's had this toy for 15 years, it's his favorite, and it was like, Ugh, that's a bad sign that your bird has never played with that toy to the point of destruction. It doesn't mean it's a favorite. Toys are a big deal, and there's a lot of different types of toys. So keep in mind, look for natural types of um, materials used. I love stuff with like coconut shells, wood, bamboo, um, anything that's kind of woven. Specific types of rope are really, really great so they can just tear apart. Is there metal on the inside? There's not. How are you making that noise? So a shower. I will take you to my shower and show you what I do for my macaws because I get them shower perches. Okay, so in my shower, I have different sizes of shower perches. The cool thing is they lay this way and then they just swing out and they're really, really sturdy. They can hold, they can hold multiple macaws on one. It's just that there's not a lot of space for them to bathe. But shower perches are probably my second favorite way to give my macaws a shower. My first favorite way is when they're outside in an aviary and I can use the hose. That's awesome. Actually, no, no, no. My first favorite way is mother nature to rain. Yeah, then the hose, then the shower perch. Um, so depending on what you guys have going on. They also like spray baths, but they like spray baths forever. Like my hand hurts. So if you get an auto mister thingy, that would be better. But birds should be showering every day if you can convince them of it. Even today, I was showering Jinx this morning with Comet. Comet was really into it. Jinx was not so much into it. Um, but by the end, Jinx got really into it. So keep in mind that if your bird initially isn't that into it, certain things can trigger them to be more into a bath, like running the vacuum for whatever reason. Um, I find that, yeah, just certain oddities. And he's back. Can I kiss? Love you. A scale, so a gram scale is really, really important for macaws so that you can see subtle changes in their weight. Um, and that's the fastest way that you are going to pick up on illness with parrots because they're so good at hiding and disguising illness. Um, like I said, a scale can literally save your bird's life, so please do that. Get in the habit of weighing your bird. If you can do it every day in the morning before your bird has been served breakfast, that is ideal. We don't want a full weight because it's not totally accurate, and they will have different full weights based on what they ate. So my birds will weigh more or less depending on if they had fresh food or pellets. Really? No. Okay, how much space does a macaw need? Ideally, if you can have some open space where they can fly around, even a bird room, a Florida room, I miss my Florida room so much, uh, a netted area, like those um, pool areas in Florida are awesome. Can you tell I really wanna go to Florida? Uh, things like that is, is, what are you doing? Oh, you're leaving, okay is really ideal. The more space, the better. To be honest, the more space you can offer a bird, the more enrichment they're going to get, right? So if you can find a cool indoor space or if you can provide a very neat indoor outdoor space that's um, safe and netted or something like that where you can fly your bird, it's gonna be phenomenal for your bird. Would you like to destroy a toy? Um, play stands. So I use a variety of play stands from Amazon that uh, have food dishes, which is really cool because I can bring my birds out, hang out with me and give them breakfast inside or put them on them after a shower, things of that sort. They can just kind of hang out in a designated area that isn't necessarily pooping on my carpet and um, is a nice place for them to have their space as well. So I use all sorts of different types of tea stands or training stands. This is one of my favorites from Amazon. You can see it's like pretty long, but it's short, so it's really great for training. I have another one over there that's wooden that's uh, better for the smaller birds. I have one that comets on over there, and then I have, oh, one 
over there in that corner. So I have a variety of different ones. I have a metal one somewhere as well that I use. It's over by the door. Bubba. Bubba. That's uh, great for flight training. So sands can serve dual purposes and be in different parts of the room so that you don't have to drag it from room to room. This one is on wheels, which makes it really, really cool and easy to transport around. I feel like if you have a macaw, you should have a basic understanding of training. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you should understand what positive and negative reinforcement are, positive punishment and negative punishment and, and accidental um, reinforcement, accidental punishment. Because this will help you long-term understand your bird better and communicate more clearly with your bird versus having a bird that someday bites you and you're too, too intimidated from that day forward to work through it. So that's the scariest thing that people can get in the situation of. And I just feel like if people went in having a better basic understanding of animal behavior and how to shape it, they would be better off from the get-go. I firmly believe in, obviously people live in different places, right? But I firmly believe in outdoor aviaries. I love, 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 love them. And I find my birds are so content in outdoor aviaries, just being in the sunshine, the breeze, the nice weather. Um, these guys are designed to be outside most of the time anyway. So the more time we can provide outdoors, the better. So an outdoor aviary is definitely ideal, even if you're just doing it during certain parts of the day. Ah, can't focus. But outside time is, definitely necessary and being by window does not count. Um, just don't do it in a unsafe manner. Having a travel carrier is really important. These guys will break apart those plastic ones. Uh, so don't use those. Have the ones that at least have metal on the side. I use dog crates sometimes to transport my guys. Just be aware that since they are made for dogs, the bar spacing isn't exactly ideal. So you need to be really safe about how you go about using them and for certain amounts of time. So it's really short amounts of time. Um, with airline travel, you only have so much that you can work with because they have their certain codes. There's nothing there. There's nothing. There's oh. n yeah, there's nothing there. Promise. Nothing. If you can find an avian vet, it's very, very ideal. Or at least get with a vet. If, if an avian vet is not able to happen for you, at least get with a vet and say, do you have a source of avian vets that you can go to to ask questions? Because that's gonna be really necessary if anything you know, was to go wrong with your bird. Noise level, keep in mind that macaws are large and although I don't find them as annoying as sun conures because it's not as constant, they can get very loud. Um, their voices can travel miles and your neighbors may not appreciate it. It's just the natural, uh, you know, this is the sound they make. Dogs bark, cats meow, birds scream. So there is going to be some of it. You're not gonna have a completely silent macaw, but you can definitely, um, wow, it's confusing. Um, distracting, I mean, I'm confused by how distracted I am. You can, get the noise level down quite a bit by understanding behavior and why your bird is maybe screaming in the first place, but you're never gonna be able to get a completely silent bird. So if that's the goal, see yourself? Bobo, you see yourself? Uh, you can always replace screaming with talking or whistling or singing or anything that you like or laughing. Ha 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 ha. If your bird will pick up a laugh, which Jinx doesn't do that laugh. He does my really embarrassing laugh. What else about macaws? I think they're awesome. I think they're some of the most obvious with body language and their feathers. They're some of the most fun. They're probably the safest option to free fly, which makes them super awesome. Uh, they're beautiful. They're up to no good sometimes. And everyone's gonna be different, right? So don't think that all blue throated macaws are gonna be like this guy. Each bird is its own. So do be aware of the stereotypes that some species of macaws have. So for example, scarlet macaws are nippy. That's kind of the consensus. So Dave and I will use stereotypes like, oh, Comet's more scarlet than Tusa. And it's just something where Comet's more likely to nip when you're not expecting it, or if you, you're more likely to miss the signs from Comet and have him nip than from Tusa. Tusa's a little bit more obvious, so we always say that he's a little bit more blue and gold. Um, Jinx, who knows what you are. I <laughs> just thought he was gonna do it, and I tested it anyway. Gross. Who knows where your foot has been. Uh, you did have a shower, but still. It's like fun to do the video with them, and then I'm like, did anybody learn anything? Did I say everything? Did, did I get any points across whatsoever, Papa? Did we teach them anything? <laughs>
What did they learn today? They learned Jinx loves drawstrings. Happy macaw video. <coughs> if I was going to pick a favorite type of macaw, I really like the hybrids. Uh -huh. No offense, you're awesome. You're just a lot. The thing about Jinx is that, interesting thing about him, he doesn't bite as much as he hits. So if you're doing something he doesn't want you to do, he will like move your finger. He'll just like move it, hit it, bump it. Like that's what he does instead of biting, which is nice. Um, whereas I feel like other macaws will just lay into you and bite you. He, he bumps you first. He bumps you first. He bumps you because he's bubs. Uh, yeah. So blue throat macaws are awesome. They're awesome sauce pups. They're awesome. They're pretty cool. They're a little crazy. They're crazy. I love him. I'm not sure I recommend him. Gathering and, and would you like to come here? Mmm, <laughs> love you. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Macaws are great, but they're not for everybody. They're not for most everybody. Okay, macaws are my favorite species. I'm just gonna admit it, macaws are my favorite. These two boys are super awesome. They're so handsome. Yeah, they're really handsome. They're really awesome. Oh crap, he found my other drawstring. It's over.